Hey, what's up, everyone? Uh, I am here with uh, a video that kind of came to mind for two reasons. One is because of my wife, and number two is because sometimes people ask me questions about uh, about handguns because they know I'm really into into firearms. My wife, uh, well, I have I have a Beretta PX4 Storm at 45. My wife's not really into handguns, but she loves my Beretta PX4 Storm, and she calls it her gun. Loves it, and she shoots extremely well. Um, she usually puts most of her rounds right in or around the center, and it's like a big ragged hole. Shoots it very, very well. The only problem is that <clears throat> she can't rack the slide on it. I've tried and tried and tried to get her to rack it. Now, I think a little bit of it is technique, but I think the rest of it is she's very small and she has trouble racking the slide. Now, I know other people who have uh, arthritis or, or general hand weakness or other types of disabilities, and they also can't rack a slide. Now, I have some, some handguns here, and when you're looking at the handguns uh, that I recommend people with... Uh, either weakness in their hands or maybe a, a disability that affects their hands or their ability to manipulate um, items. I, I don't want you to look at it specifically as a recommendation of a particular gun, but maybe a particular design element. Now, obviously, I have these four guns here. And I've owned them for quite a while. Like, um, I think I've owned the Beretta, for, so, um, the Beretta Neos there for like nine years. Um, and I would say the other ones are probably all between like six and eight years. So I've had them for a while, put a lot of rounds through them, and I like them. They're not going anywhere. <laughs> so um, just wanted to show you, uh, you know, with some handguns, there could be various reasons why people have problems. Um, the big one I want to address is um, basically manipulating the slide. Now this, this gun right here, this is the, the 21A. And it's in 25 ACP. They also have this in 22 LR. And there's also a slightly larger version, the Tomcat 30, 32, which is 32 caliber. Um, extremely sil uh, sil similar. And if you can see here, if you're not familiar with it, oh, by the way, um, the two guns that have magazines, there is no magazine in there. Everything's been safety checked. So no ammo anywhere around here. And the guns are clear. But anyway, this is a tip up barrel. So what you can do is. Just put the magazine in there, press the lever, you put a round in there, see empty just like I told you, put a round in there, and then just squeeze it shut. When you do that, it's ready to go. You pull the trigger, you shoot. Of course, that's assuming that you, uh, you know, you take the safety off. So, I mean, this whole thing is like one hand manipulation. Technically, someone could operate this with just one hand. You could have a paralyzed left hand, and really all you got to do is just Kind of maybe set it down, put a round in there like this, okay? Just kind of squeeze it down, and you're ready to go. So I know some people are saying, well, 25 and 22, what are you going to do with that? I already hear it. I can hear it through the screen. Uh, let me just uh, reiterate that the purpose of this video is to ensure that people who are interested in owning a gun or are interested in self-defense have a handgun. A well-placed 25 or a well-placed 22 will do exactly what they need it to do. They don't have to have a 44 Magnum. They don't have to have a 9. They don't need to have a 10 millimeter. Uh, I really don't want to disparage caliber choices. Personally, if it was a friend or relative of mine and they were in a tough spot, they feared for their life, I'd much rather them have a small 25 ACP than a 22 LR. You're not going to get the same terminal ballistics, obviously, but there's always the chance that the presentation of a firearm will give uh, an attacker second thoughts, and if not, placement, in my opinion, and the opinion of a lot of other people, um, Trump's caliber. So I will stick by this, and like I said, the design is awesome for someone who has any limitations. <clears throat> Another one that's good is uh, is the tried-and-true uh, double-action revolver. Now, this one is the Taurus uh, 605, or is it? Yes, the Taurus 605. Uh, this one, uh, your eyes not deceiving you, is polymer. It is in 357 Magnum. Now, this is a very unpleasant gun to shoot in 357 Magnum. I've done it. Uh, it's extremely light, and it, it's just, it's not fun. It's pretty pleasant, though, in 38 Special. And again, there's a lot of 38 Special handguns that are smaller than this. Um, 
lighter than this, or if you want something a little heavier, heavier than this. And this is another case of a gun that can be technically, if you do it right, you can manipulate it with just one hand. So again, even someone who has a very extreme uh, disability or weakness, you just saw that I did this with one hand. Okay, very easy. So just kind of push this over, as you know, pop it through with your fingers, and then you can load this gun. Okay, just if you have to, you can just kind of, you know, set it on the table, load it up, you're ready to go. Pull the trigger, it's go, it's loaded. And for those who say, well, 22 or 25 kind of suck, well, you could put a 38 special in something this size, or if you want to and you're good with the recoil, you could put a 357 Magnum. So this kind of takes care of the whole uh, caliber criticism because you get a really potent round in here. Like I said, 38 Special served a lot of police officers well over the years. And the 357 Magnum, I don't think anyone's going to criticize stopping power. Again, you have trade-offs with recoil, but easy to manipulate. You can do it with just one hand. Now, as far as another gun you can use with one hand, <clears throat> we have the Bond Arms Derringer. Uh, this has made a couple of appearances in my video. I love this gun. This is an heirloom gun. Uh, this is something you can pass down to your kids. It's just built like a tank, and I love it. Now, this has um, some good things and some limitations. Let's go over the good stuff first. Good stuff. You can load it with one hand. See that pin right there? You load it down. You flip it over. Okay? And again, if you have to, you can set it down. And then you can load the rounds if you need to. And then just kind of... Whoops, just kind of push it down like that, and it's loaded, okay? Now, limitations. It only holds two rounds. Second limitation, uh, it's a single action, okay? So you got to do that be before every round. And by the way, it does also have a safety, okay? Now, I already hear it. Some people are saying, you're suggesting a single action for personal defense? You can't have a single action. Two shots, that's ridiculous. The FBI says most most uh, confrontations are have at least three or four rounds fired. Yeah, you're right. Um, three rounds are better than two, four is better than three, five is better than four, and, you know, 18 is even better than all of those. You're right. Um, single action... You can get pretty damn fast if you practice, but yeah, it's not the ideal. So two rounds, not ideal. Single action, not ideal. But just like this 25, if you have limited mobility, I'm not talking about a healthy individual who is proficient with firearms and has uh, good hand strength and no limitations. I'm, I'm talking about someone who might have problems. So... Um, this is something I think would be good. It's one of those things that I would, again, a, re a friend or relative, I'd rather have them have a 410 in here or a 45 Colt or like this barrel is a 45 ACP. I would rather have them uh, be using something like this um, versus something that uh, isn't as, you know, basically a sharp stick. Okay, so is it ideal? No. Would it be my first choice? But I think it's a very good option for someone. And again, you can load it with one hand if need be. That takes us to uh, a gun that you... Well, actually, you might be able to charge it with one hand. Now this, this is a 22. I can hear it starting now. This is a 22 long rifle. This is one of my favorites. It is a Beretta Neos. You've probably seen this on the channel a couple of times. Uh, it's got some kind of decent weight for a 22. It's six inch barrel. So you're getting a little more velocity than you get with something like the 21A. Normally has a 10-round magazine, which I've taken out and cleared. Now, you might notice that this one has a slide, and you're saying to me, why do you have a, something with a slide? The whole thing is, slides are hard to rack. And that's usually true, but see this slide? Two fingers. Finger and a thumb. I pulled it. Pinky. Pinky. Pinky and thumb. Okay. Now, that's pretty easy. Again, you might say, well, it's a 22. What are you going to do with a 22? Well, <laughs> there's a lot of people who are right now not around uh, who would tell you 22 is pretty effective. Okay, and again, is it the best option? Well, probably not. But again, if this is, you're talking about a parent, a sibling, a friend, and 
they have to have something in the house for self-defense. This is kind of hard to beat. You have 10 rounds, 22 long rifle. Very, very easy to uh, to charge it, to pull the slide back. Very, very um, light trigger pull on it. Um, just like, and, and, and super, re like, as far as this particular gun goes, super, super, super reliable. This is more reliable than, I think, a lot of centerfire pistols. So, <clears throat> plus it's inexpensive, too. That's a, I mean, that's another thing, too, if, if you're taking these into account. Uh, right now, you can get these for about two, well, about 270 for the four and a half inch version. I haven't seen the six inch or six and a half inch in a long time. Um, this, I had paid like 250 for this. Uh, this I paid like 280 for. I'm seeing these for about 380. I paid about 360 for this. Now I'm seeing these for um, mm, like 450 with the longer uh, rubber grips. I put these on. These are like 50 bucks extra. Uh, 21As are going for about 400. I've seen for the Inox version. I bought that used for like 250. So you have a good a, a good range here. Um, like I said, if you if you want a higher capacity, I mean there are options. Like as far as an easy slide, uh, I I have a video I did a few weeks ago about a Keltec P17. It has a slide kind of like this. It's only a couple of inches long, extremely light, um, very light springs. You can pull it back and forth with your pinky and thumb. It's it's just really easy to to manipulate. That's probably a very good option. And with that gun, you'd have 17 rounds. This one, you have 10 rounds. Um, and I, again, I can't really speak to the to the Caltech. I haven't taken it to the range yet. I have put several thousand rounds through this. I must have put at least seven or eight thousand rounds through this. Possibly, probably even more. I think I'm on the low end by saying seven or eight thousand. Super reliable. But like I said, if you if you want something that's you know 10 rounds, great. There's your 10 rounds. Um, you want something that say okay, that's enough. You want something that has more power? Well, I got a 38 Special 357 Magnum for you right here. How about this one? Well, this has a 45 ACP barrel. That's not enough for you. You can get a 10 millimeter. You can you can start shooting uh, triple up buck or uh, or 410 slugs out of it. So there are a lot of good options, uh, both for you know slightly more capacity, less recoil. Again, also less recoil, more power. You know, and then if you don't want to get the the lower, I mean, like I said, this this really shouldn't be much of an issue for most people. You get five rounds there, you know. So, um, basically, the uh, I'm trying to think of anything else that I think would be good. I mean, as far as Derringers go, I do have a double tap defense that I was going to bring out, but it's a cool gun. It's a fun gun. I never had an issue with it. But if I were going to bet my life on a Derringer, it would be this one. I've used it a ton versus not using the, the uh, double tap as much and it's just made so well it's it's just totally different as far as some of the cheaper ones like the cobras i am extremely unimpressed it kind of reminds me of a toy gun i had when i was a little kid true story um <clears throat> so i mean that's one option really any um any revolver any double action revolver is also going to be pretty easy to shoot um the thing is and then the, you know the other good thing is you can just uh, you know, check re recoil. I mean, you can get a 17 or a 22 um, revolver, or you can get a 50 cal. I mean, really, pick your poison. If you're if you're recoil averse, you well, know, then maybe you want to get a 22 or or a 38 special with you know wad cutters or something. If you want something that's got kind of like a moderate amount, they make nine millimeter revolvers. I have a, a Taurus 905. It's pretty good, nice, um, smooth shooting. Um, very comfortable to shoot, uh, and it's very small, so it would be good for somewhat smaller hands. Um, that's a great option. So, uh, like I said, there's a lot out there, a lot of good options, and they don't involve having to pull back a slide that's going to cause problems for someone who might be arthritic. Um, you know, maybe they, they have some type of like a muscle issue in their hands. Maybe they're just not strong enough to do it. And then, of course, the other issue, the other possibility, too, is uh, I've heard excellent things about the um, M&P Shield, the, uh, the EZ version. Now, supposedly, that's supposed to be a very, very light slide. I've never used it, so I can't attest to that. But I've, like I said, I've heard very good things. So that might be an option that makes this whole conversation null and void. But again, that also raises the possibility that Maybe you can't afford to go out and spend maybe you know, $300, $350 on a, a shield, um, easy. I mean, it might be a little more now because of the market. 
But guess what? Maybe your maybe their dad left them a revolver. Um, these guns have been they've been making these I think since the late fifties, and similar guns. Also, uh, another option would be the uh, Beretta nine fifty B nine fifty BS I believe. Uh, those have been around since the mid fifties. So it's possible someone might have inherited something like this or something like this, and that's a good option for them. And maybe they don't have money to drop three or four hundred dollars on a handgun. But they already have these other things, and I think if that's the case, you should uh, you should offer some encouragement encouragement and help them become proficient uh, with that gun. Because you know what, I'd rather have someone who's comfortable and proficient with this little tiny twenty five ACP than someone that has a really really cool uh, you know three fifty seven Magnum revolver that they're one uncomfortable shooting and two are not familiar with how to run the gun properly. So, just some food for thought. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. You got something out of it. Maybe maybe you're thinking things a little different, approaching them a bit differently, and that's always a good thing. If you're not subscribed, I would appreciate uh, if you would, and I would also appreciate a like because it helps me kind of see what, what some of you guys and gals, there's a couple of you out there, um, like to watch. So, helps me out a lot. Have a good one.